Greetings hobbyists, this is Arslan's of all and in this video we're going to have a look at how to add filigree to an object and we're going to have a look at that in a couple of different ways. So on the screen we've got this shield that we made in a previous video having a look at how to modify an object using the bend function to create this curved shield. There's a link in the description if you'd like to have a look at that and we're going to add some filigree and detailing to this. Now there are two ways of doing this. I have my preferences, but depending on what you want to do, each one is slightly different and has different positives and negatives. So I'm gonna go through both. So the first thing, we're gonna press Shift A, and we're gonna bring in a curve. And this could be a NURBS curve or a Bezier curve, whichever one you prefer using. I prefer Bezier curves. I think it's just what I'm more used to using. I'm gonna scale that up a little bit. And then importantly, I'm gonna to go to the Z axis view using the gimbal. And then I'm gonna to go to edit mode and I'm going to press S and Y and zero to flatten that out because we don't want anything on the Y axis being different, we want it flat. So go back into front view and we can start modifying this curve. So I'm just gonna select our individual bits and press G to start moving that around. I can press E to extrude, R to move around the angle of the curve and S to make that either bigger or smaller. So I'm just gonna fill around with that until I end up with something that I'm happy with. And then we're gonna go back into object mode and we've got our curve sorted. So for this version of filigree, all of the secrets really lie down here in the object data properties for this curve. So I'm gonna click on that and it will bring up a lot of different options on the right hand side of the screen. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up this resolution here. I've got it as 12. This means between each of these vertex points, it's split 12 times. And for certain extreme curves, that's not gonna look very smooth. So I'm actually gonna up that somewhere in the region of 24, and that makes that look a lot better. Obviously, that is adding a lot of extra geometry to our shape. Do convert this into a mesh. Now I'm gonna scroll down to the bevel section. And we have used this before for making things like pipes. And all I'm gonna do is increase the depth there to make this larger. I want something about there. Let's have a look at that. Having a look at the shield, maybe something about there. I think I'll shrink this down afterwards as well. So something that's gonna show us this detail. Now we want our two endpoints to be pointed. So I'm gonna go back into edit mode, select that. And if you press Alt and S, you can scale these individually. And I'm just gonna hit zero and enter. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. So Alt S, zero and enter, and we've got that. Now, the first and really important thing, and this is a really big source of errors if you're going to be doing 3D printing is if I come to object mode and really zoom in here there is a slight hole on the end of this you can't get this to the point where it is going to be zero so this is something we need to be aware of and at a later date we're going to have to go back and change this to fix it there is the other option of selecting fill caps here at least that way it's going to produce less of a problem if you forget about it so i generally tick that but we are going to come back later and fix that so it's not a problem but we have to do that once we've converted this into a mesh and now this is fine if we want something to be a tube but I want something a little bit more ornate, something that's gonna have an edge to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change our profile now from being round to profile. And this allows me to actually modify this myself. So what you'll see here, if we scroll down slightly, is that we've got what our edges are gonna look like. If you can see, this is relatively square in section at this point. And we can start moving this around to make this bit slightly more pointed or the rest of it slightly more round. Now, as soon as I start clicking on these, it's gonna start modifying this shape. For example, now we've got it slightly more round and you can see we've got some options here of how that's gonna look. Now I generally stick with this auto handle type. It's generally quite easy to move around and we have to work out which point we want to be more pointed. So I think I'm gonna go something like that and that gives this nice rounded but curved point. And essentially this is what it's looking like. If I go this way, it's probably a bit more obvious to make out. This is what this is looking like in cross section. We can see this point here. So this is quite nice doing something that's not particularly flat. It looks a little bit more interesting and it's going to come up with a nice shape to potentially paint and I can fill around with this as much as I want. Now this is quite nice as an object because it's very easy to move around. At this point I've got it, I can shift and D to duplicate it and I can just go back into edit mode and start moving all of these around. So I could make a totally different shape very very quickly. 
and I've got something very fun and quick to play with. So it's really nice. It's a very good way of making these filigree designs. It's relatively quick. Once you've done it once, you can keep on doing it, modifying very easily. There is some other benefits of this one as well. The first and most fun one that I find is that actually you don't have to stick with one central spine because of this profile option. What you can actually do is start making something a little bit more dramatic. So if I click here and bring that out, I've got these little handles there and I can make something really cool. For example, one that's got three points on it. And if I right click, and convert to mesh and then have a look at this. You can see what that looks like and then we've got these three spines running down the center. So it gives a little bit more options for some quite interesting filigree. Now do remember when we go back into this, we have to come to this point, shift Z, select all of those vertices and M and merge at center. Otherwise this is not gonna be a manifold object. So same here, M at center, Shift Z to go out of X-ray mode, and we've got this filigree that we can use. So lots of different options there and lots of fun shapes that you can make. So this is quite good, but there are issues with it, especially because these curves aren't as much under our control as I'd like. And we can't modify the geometry without having converted this to a mesh. So let's have a quick look at the other option. Now this is gonna be a little bit more work to begin with, but it's gonna give us a lot more options in terms of how we're gonna edit this. And it does give us some extra options at the end. Though generally it's best for making a single spine. So we're gonna go into mesh, select a plane. Again, I'll bring this to the side and I'm gonna click R, X and 90 to rotate that so we've got our plane. Now at this point, all we're gonna do is go into edge mode and I'm just gonna move these edges around and then extrude them to create approximately the shape that I want. And obviously we can use R to try and keep everything relatively similar on thickness. It's the best way to do this. So we have a basic shape here and we're going to go through and start making this into our filigree. So the first thing we want to do is press Ctrl and R and we're going to add an edge loop all the way through the center of this shape. Click and then escape so we've got that there and we're going to start making our points straight away. So I'm going to go into vertex mode. I'm going to select those with the center one last, M and then L to merge at last. I'm going to do the same at the other end as well. So shift click each of the points M and then L to merge at last. And already we've got this pointed sort of shape that we can start to modify. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our ridge. So I'm gonna go into edge mode and I'm gonna select all but the last edge running through the center. And if I press G and Y, I can pull that out and we've got this shape here that's looking quite nice. Next, if I go to the back, we do need to fill in this back space, otherwise it's not going to be a manifold object. So I'm gonna go into edge mode, select those two, press F to fill it, and then I'm gonna select on that face and just F and it will auto fill into those quads. And there, that one is a triangle. So we've got this ready to go. And the final thing, still in edge mode, is I'm gonna select all of those edges. I just press Alt and select that. And I'm gonna press Shift E, and all that's gonna do is up what we call the mean crease. If I go to item here, we can see this mean crease is now one. If I control Z, it was zero. I could do this here as well to get it up to one. And then all we need to do is come into our modifier properties, add modifier, and then subdivision surface. And if we up this levels to something a little bit higher, we get this nice shape. Now the last thing we need to do, and this really helps give it some depth, is I'm just gonna to come to faces and I'm gonna select all of the faces on the back side, and I'm gonna extrude those out slightly. And then what I can do is go into edge mode, select that edge there, that edge there, shift and E and make that point. Now, excitingly, in the newer version of Blender that's currently in testing, I think it's 3.2, might be 3.1, you don't even need to actually make this. You can actually start to add a crease to the vertices, which is really quite exciting as something to be able to simplify this process. So at this point, I've got a slightly different looking filigree. 
if I compare it to the bottom one. Now there is something else that's beneficial about this as well, which I do want to mention, and that is if I want to add any additional points coming off of it. If I just G and Z those down, if I select this and Shift and D to duplicate it, and I'm just going to press Z to bring it down. What's really nice about this is because when I come into here, I've got access to a lot of the geometry. I can even click on cage to make sure that I can see everything exactly on it. This makes it a lot easier to make sure that you have everything in exactly the correct place. For example, if I want to add additional paths from this, this is something you can't really do with the curve. But here I can quite easily go into vertex mode, shift Z to X-ray mode, select all of these vertices, delete the vertices, make sure this is whole. So I'm going to go into edge mode, select those edges and F to fill it. And I'm going to shift an E to make that a hard edge by upping the mean crease. And then I can just manipulate this around anywhere I want. So I'm going to press R to rotate it. Let's shift an S and put the object origin to the geometry. So it's a bit easier to rotate it. I can move that round to somewhere like here, relatively roughly at first, go into vertex mode. And I can do things like move that around there. I can move this one somewhere there. Let's rotate that round. And I can manipulate this how I want just to be an extra added point coming off of it. And we can see that that's looking pretty nice straight away it lines up really clearly and and this is the point that's really good about this is that i can make sure this vertex here if i go to snapping and edge i can press g and make sure this is perfectly on that edge so we're going to get no errors when we come to merge these together so again much nicer and something you can't easily do with the curve so it depends on what you want but if you want these additional spines coming off of it this is where you might want to consider using a plane and a subdivision surface modifier for making these shapes so it really depends on what you want to end up with and what you prefer but both methods are perfectly valid I just would suggest that if you want these additional pathways coming off, you do this using the plane and the subdivision surface. If you want something that looks a little bit more rounded and has a little bit more of an interesting shape to it, you could use the Bezier curve or whichever one you think is most suitable or you're used to using in terms of speed. There is one other thing that I want to mention about using the second method, if I just delete that, is that you do have some added benefits in terms of your control over some of the vertices that you don't have on a Bezier curve. If I come to this Bezier curve and go into edit mode, you can see while I can come here, what you cannot do is snap the origin of this, or even if I use my pie menu, you can't snap the origin, which would normally be down here to one of these points, which can be slightly annoying. Whereas here for this object, I can go into vertex mode and I can select, for example, that point there, shift and S, and I'm gonna put my origin at the vertices. Now you'll notice this looks a little bit off. That's because at the moment we've got this and you should remember that the object is actually here. But what this allows me to do in vertex mode is if I shift and Z and delete those out, what I can now do is add a modifier and mirror this. You'll notice this is having a problem because we haven't fixed the rotation yet. So if I go back into object mode and if I control an A and set the rotation, We've now got this being mirrored. I'm going to put the mirror above the subdivision surface. So I can select those, move all of these a little bit on the X axis, and then I could extrude those and have them connect at the center. Somewhere there, and I want to activate clipping so that those just push into one another. So we've got that now, and we've got this nice symmetrical object. I did move that, so let's just move that back. Somewhere there, and again, vertex mode, snapping is already on. I can move that to there, and this looks really nice already. Now you will notice we've got a slight error here. If I go into edge mode, this edge has not been made. Crease, so I'm just gonna have to increase that really quick with Shift and E, and then I can nicely mirror this across that using hard ops in this instance but you could do it over here and we've got that looking nice and symmetrical to add to our shield 
As always, thank you for watching and I hope you found the video useful. If there's any other tutorials you'd like to see from me, do suggest them in the comments section, that way I can add them to my schedule of videos to create.